Uh, welcome back all of you, Nana here. And then uh, in the past few days, I've got a lot of doubts from my students uh, regarding this uh, destination type as inventory and then destination type as expense. And then uh, there is a wrong concept uh, which they have not really clearly understood it actually. And then uh, they were asking uh, whether it is an expense item or what exactly it is fine. So many doubts they had. So then I thought that I will now conduct one session on this and then I will now clarify all the doubts for you. So you must have a clarity in understanding uh, the basics basically. Fine. So that's what it is. So this session is mainly meant for expense destination purchases. So I'll now go on and share my screen now. So before I begin, uh, what I'm going to do is I will now have a small bit of marketing of my program basically. So I sell my uh, classroom records at this navigation fine, oracle nana.com slash INVPV. Oracle nana.com slash INV Pivo is my sales page actually. You go there, you'll not find my sales will be coming now actually. <clears throat> and then go down now. Fine. So I'm mainly concentrating on the supply chain modules. One is the inventory, one is the product data hub, procurement, and then fusion order value. So the agendas are here and there. So if you click on one of the agendas, what happens? It will not show you the complete agenda actually. It will not show you the agenda. So watch the agenda and then see whether your topics are covered or not. Especially in the inventory, what happens on the replenishment techniques point, uh, I'm not aware of what uh, the Kanban replenishment, the replenishment counting, the periodic automatic replenishment, <clears throat> fine, these three things are not known to me. Fine. And then uh, you need what happens, a knowledge of uh, the technicals, the rest and postman services are required. And so since I'm not aware of it, what happens, I'm unable to, what happens, I conduct a training on this actually. But uh, some of them have been moved into planning actually. So if you learn planning modules, I think probably you will not do, you will do all the five replenishment techniques, but I do it on the, uh, what's called, on the EBIS. EBIS, I contact all the replenishment techniques. Here, only MinMax is the only one uh, which is uh, known to me, actually. So I cover only this. So likewise, what happens, you'll be having some uh, deficiencies on my coverage, actually. So uh, what I suggest is what, you better go through the agenda, first of all, and then see whether everything is not, you go to the what's called provision procurement agenda. So this is a very big one. And then uh, when I conducted last time, the 15-page agenda, I can see, fine. I conducted, it went on for more than three and a half months, actually. My wife was saying that no more this this program because <laughs> all my weekend uh, weekend outings are all spoiled, actually. Fine. Weekend, we are unable to go out at all. Fine. No, no. We, we are unable to go to any of the relations and other things. Now, fine. So she says that don't conduct this training at all. <laughs> she has given a very strict instruction not to go there because it takes more than three and a half months, basically. It's a very big one. And then if you see what happens, the second pillar, self service procurement, everything is coming. Fine, third pillar, fourth pillar, and then uh, so much of things are there. So what you can do is you can uh, buy my recorded videos and then practice because uh, 322 point agenda points covering it takes a long time because so, so much of our questions will be coming. And then uh, I'm unable to what happens uh, start an online session for the procurement actually. And then here also what happens uh, on the SSP part, what happens uh, they want to have a uh, punch outs and uh, transparent punch outs. But that needs an e-commerce gateway, and so I'm not aware of it. So likewise, what happens? There will be some uh, what happens uh, uh, problems in my coverage actually. So you better go through the agenda, and if you're feeling, then what happens? You can buy. Fine. The first. Similarly, for the product data hub, fine. Each and everything. The product data hub. What happens? I even cover the uh, enterprise structure also. Fine. How to create an enterprise structure also? I'm not doing it. Fine. In the beginning, what happens? The enterprise structure is now getting created, and then afterwards, I go there and then I start the actual product data hub. It covers all the basics, but again, uh, it is not a very in-depth one. <clears throat> it covers what happens, go there. It, the validation rules are covered, uh, the assignment rules are covered, and then description concatenation is covered. And then afterwards, we jump into NIR, find new item request with the automatic approvals. <clears throat> and then afterwards, I go for the definition phase. And then afterwards, I go into the approval group of uh, NIR, actually. And then afterwards, I do the change orders. And then finally, do the import maps also. Import maps is not written here, actually, because it's not having any... Agenda points like this, fine. So I'm not covering it. So these are all the sales which are available at my website, actually. You can buy either inventory or product data hub. So any of them can be paid. <laughs> so recently, I conducted one training on OM plus PDH put together, actually. So but OM will cost you 2,500, and then PDH will cost you 2,000. But uh, this training, if you buy, the combined one will cost you only 3,500. So 1,000 rupees discount is there, fine. You buy it. So both of them will be available, actually. And then uh, uh, EBIS also, what I was, uh, because of famous, uh, uh, so many people were asking for it. I conducted for inventory and then for EBIS basically, for order management actually. Uh, but uh, there is not much of a requirement coming up for, for the other modules. So the other uh, module records are really pretty bold actually. 
So uh, these are the only sales available. And then if you are in India, what happens? You can go there, click on it. If you click on it, you can even throughout the world it works. It's a payment gateway actually. If you click on it, what happens? It will open up. You fill up your name, email ID, and then phone number, and then go ahead. And then it will ask you to choose your country. And then uh, if you're having a, let's say, Romania you are in, and then if your debit card has got a two-factor authentication, debit card or credit card, if it has got a two-factor authentication, it will accept. And even in US also, it will accept. Fine. So uh, you can even pay via your cards also. Uh, because this is a payment gateway, it needs uh, two-factor authentication. Fine, like what happens, you have to have the four-digit four pin, and then uh, uh, your message has to come in uh, on uh, your mobile. The OTP has to come. So there are some other requirements. If it meets, then you can very well pay even outside India also. <clears throat> Fine, just see. Fine, okay. close it. And then if you are not able to pay via the payment gateway, what you can do is you can even go via PayPal also. On PayPal. But unfortunately, PayPal is not charging me 18% GST. Fine, that's the biggest problem. So that's why the rates are, I mean, and compared to 2,500, I'm not charging you 40 USD for inventory. 40 USD comes around 3,200 actually, because I have to pay 18% GST for PayPal. PayPal is not charging me a, a GST invoice also. Whereas this uh, website charges very minimal, uh, what happens, uh, around 2% uh, only GST. GST is very minimal for the uh, payment gateway actually. Whereas it is the 18 percent actually, so that's why whatever the rates are slightly high actually. So <laughs> you only have to bear it. So these uh, things are available over here. Fine, you can even buy. And then uh, you, if you buy this 21 module record, fine, that's a very economical one. Fine, pay here for 9,000 rupees 21 module record. And then if you click on this link, there is a link. Fine, click on it. Go to the and click on the link and go to the below link and then see what are all contained in the 21 module. Fine, click on it. <clears throat> You'll not find these are the ones. Now, fine, the first 13. Fine. First 13 are basically my recordings, actually. My classroom records. You'll be getting everything now. And then afterwards, you'll now get both the documents and records. Fine. You'll get both the records and documents. Whereas the remaining ones are given by my students, actually. Fine. The remaining eight are given by my students. So for which I have only the records. Basically. I don't have any documentation, basically. And then records are available. But for financials, three of my students have given three different sets of records, basically. So it will be really very good, actually. Fine. The whole package coming at 9,000 rupees is really very cheap. Actually. So you can even think of it now, depending upon your needs, actually. Mm -hmm. So you can even go there and then do it. Fine. And then apart from that, I have a, what's called a group there now. Fine. If you go there, see, I have a group. I have got two groups now. Fine. One is what? The past students group. So in the past students group, I used to share the instances as and when I get it from my students. My students are giving it now, fine. So the username is coming. The uh, what's called the URL is coming. The password is coming. So the usernames are pinned on the top. If you click on it, there is a username. Fine. Click on it. All the usernames are pinned on the top actually. And this many users are available here. You can use any of the users and then you can log in. So as and when I get it, whatever they'll be posting it. So it may not be working for a longer time, fine. But anyhow, what happens there? As a stopgap measure, you can very well use it actually. And then you can even interact with my students. Now, fine. More than thousand students are there. The password of the group, as well as I have a EBS fusion discussion. Fine, there are also more than 1,000 students are there. So, with which, what happens? You can even discuss with them. So, your problems may even get solved by discussing, interacting with others. Not so very good uh, interacting platform, actually. So, I will be giving you uh, the link to join. There's a private groups, actually. So, I'll be giving you links to join also. So, it's a really a very, what happens, a worthwhile uh, <laughs> investment for you now, fine, whatever you buy. So, it won't be really very wasteful. Right? You'll be having uh, plenty of interactions and then. Uh, you can even post your doubts on the uh, what's called on the <clears throat> Telegram groups, and then I will be assisting you. Fine, either me or somebody will be assisting you. And if required, what happens? You can even come on a Zoom call like this, and then you can even get it clarified. Actually, so this is all about my sales. Actually, fine. You can even watch the sample record, and then you can see about how my drive is organized. Fine. If you're going to buy this uh, 21 module pack for 9,000, it's a very huge one, around 130 to 140 GB worth of thing is there. So downloading such a large one, what happens? Uh, it is not so easy actually. So I'll be giving you what happens, a video on how to do it also. And apart from that, what happens, I have my YouTube channel also. <clears throat> Fine. This video is also going to be published over here. So you can go there and then you can very well subscribe to my YouTube channel. Fine. So if you go there, my channel is Ananta Nana actually. Fine. If you go there, if you, if you go to the, I don't know, I don't know. My channel name is Ananta Nana. So if you go to the Ananta Nana channel, fine, you will now find what happens, my channel will be coming up. So I got plenty of videos. So please subscribe over here and then you'll be getting a lot of useful information. You know, fine. There are more than 9,000 uh, participants are there. Fine. So click on the contents now. <clears throat> so so many useful things are available over here. <clears throat> you can even watch. Fine. It's all about great help you. Fine. So that you can even uh, enhance your knowledge of this. <clears throat> so you subscribe and then uh, click on the bell icon so that what happens, any new postings will be coming over here. This also will be posted over here. <clears throat> 
So any doubts on my sales and then uh, my other coverage? Anybody has got anything? You can talk to me now. <laughs> Good then. So there is no doubts at all. So you are all very clear upon this now. <clears throat> Sir, YouTube channel's name, Nana? Ananta Nana. Fine. You go there. Uh, if you go to the YouTube channel, so youtube.com, and then write Ananta Nana. Fine. Ananta okay. Nana. If you write Thank it, you. My channel will become. This is my channel. So you can go there and subscribe to my channel. I have subscribed already, but uh -huh. I did not. Uh, yeah, Ananta Nana. Like him, so. yeah, Ananta Nana is my channel, actually. And go there. Okay. More than 300 videos are there, actually. So much of information is there for you. And then you can watch and then you can subscribe. Thank you so much. Any other notes for anybody else? My coverage is in-depth and then uh, it will be giving you a lot of... Because I have implemented the product. It's not that what happens, I'm not just speaking like this. And then uh, I have done the implementation. Uh, some three, four implementations I did when I was there. And then uh, for this particular one, I got trained in Redwood Shows, California, actually. For procurement, I got trained there because I was an Oracle employee. So I was uh, from Oracle University, actually. Fine. There is a program called uh, TTT. Fine. Train the trainer. TTT program was there for all the Oracle employees throughout the globe, actually. So they invited everybody to remote shows and then they conduct the training on procurement, actually. So then only what happens, I got the clarity of what exactly it is. So the clarity is uh, missing in many, many institutions, basically. Fine. The institutions will not teach you the basics, basically. That is the biggest problem. Fine. If you don't know the basics and then you keep on working, what happens? It will always be a big problem, actually. So I'm going to teach the basics of what happens at the purchasing. Okay, fine. Any other doubts for anybody else? <clears throat> this is a sales page. You can even forward this link to some of your friends, basically. Fine. So it will be of a great use. Fine. My charges are very minimal, very nominal, actually, when compared to others. They charge around 20 to 25k approximately. But uh, my coverage will be definitely be worth the money you're paying, actually. But uh, PayPal is slightly expensive mainly because of what the 18% GST invoice I had to pay no fine. So that's why it's slightly expensive. Whereas this one, the payment gateway is charging me very small amount of a uh, GST actually. And around 2% only they are charging. So whereas uh, this is no charging huge actually. PayPal is charging huge. <clears throat> because it is an educational one, and so the payment gateway has now given a small concession to me. Fine. So that's why I'm not uh, it's not a very big one actually. <clears throat> Good then, fine. Now we are going to begin our activity on uh, expense destination purchases, basically. Fine, expense destination. So there are two types of accounting are there in a company. Fine. One is the what's called uh, there are actually three types. Fine. One is the financial accounting. The financial accounting is now going to give you the profit and loss as well as the balance sheet. Fine. Whenever you perform any transaction, whether you make a purchase order, you are going to receive it, and then we will now account it financially, and then we will now report the profit and loss. And then the second type of accounting is called purchasing accounting. So the purpose of purchasing accounting is basically what is to uh, reduce the spend or optimize your spend actually. Right? How much of spend you are making it. <clears throat> when we were what I was implementing a project in Muscat actually, it is actually a, a construction company. And then they want to see how much of money they have spent for cement, how much of money they have spent for sand, and then how much of has been sent for bricks. Likewise, what happens is they got around 600 categories. So for every category, they want to separately do it. And then let's say they are now building a big apartment in Muscat. So project-wise also, they want to see, as well as what happens, they want to, what happens, material-wise also, they want to see the expenses, basically. So we did it, fine. So by doing this, what happens, the biggest advantage is what? They can optimize the spend, actually. For that Muscat project, what happens, they have spent this much of money. And then they will now say, it has all got also wasted. So next time, what happens, they will now optimize the purchases and then they will now reduce the spend action. So the main purpose of purchasing module is to reduce the spend action. <coughs> but if you go there, I can go that one. I will not have a look at the <coughs> Any doubts, please ask me. When you, when you ask questions, then only what happens, I can, I can what happens, we will interact with you. <coughs> I go there, I will now open up what the fusion procurement six pillars. I conducted this training. It's a very big training. Three and a half months it took. Some time. <laughs> it's become very difficult actually. Right? I go to the fusion procurement documentation. I go to the P2P process. So if you go to the P2P process, find double click on it and then have open it up. And then have open it up. The P2P process is open it up. So once when you what happens, approve a PO, no accounting entries are hit actually. Nothing is hit. 
And then I used to demonstrate this in eBus basically fully. Whereas in uh, Fusion, I'm unable to demonstrate make the basically eBus documentation. I used to make a full take demonstration of this particular one. Now. So once when you receive the gate, what happens? Uh, the uh, gate receiving inspection account is it on the data side, and then the contra entry is accrued. Accrual is a big problem. My students are suffering like anything because this much of our money has accrued to be paid to the supplier. So these accounting entries are hit once when it is received in the gate. But what happens? Uh, the inspection department will not inspect it. Right? There may be some rejections. And then the end users will now say that they have not given the warranty certificate, the guarantee certificate, the two years pass for normal operation is not supplied to the supplier. And so they will be instructing the payables department to hold certain amount of money. Right? The 10% you hold it and do not release everything. So the payables may not be clearing the entire accrual action. And then what happens once when your invoice is created by clearing the accrual, what happens? It won't be fully clear, right? This is the biggest problem in many industries. And then if you see that what happens, millions of dollars we have to pay to various suppliers because what happens, it is not fully paid. So accrual reconciliation is a big problem. And then every day evening, they will now run an accrual reconciliation report. And then they will now say how much has been accrued or which is not paid actually. And then if it is a small amount, what happens, they may even write off. Find write off the accruals. And so they will not be concentrating on this. And remember, accrual clearing and then accrual reconciliation will never hit your financials at all. Financial accounting is not at all hit. Fine. Only for analyzing the spends, actually. Fine. The entire model of purchasing is only for spend analysis, actually. <coughs> so you analyze it and afterwards they take the appropriate decision. So it uh, provides you a lot of what happens, uh, 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 integration with the other activities, like inventory, your finance, everything. So ERP itself is what is uh, basically meant for what? A seamless integration across very many facilities of your company. Actually. Fine. It uh, integrates and then show it to you. So that what happens, you can take informed decisions on this. So here, what happens, uh, once when you do the transaction, when you deliver it, what happens, your inventory valuation will be hit and then the contra entry is offset actually. Right? So inventory valuation to offset will now go into financial accounting, whereas uh, this portion will now hit the purchasing accounting also. Purchasing accounting as well as what happens, the financial accounting will be hit together actually. Right? And then uh, these two accounts are hit and then purchasing will never have any impact on the financials at all. Financial accounting, fine. financial accounting is for profit and loss and then balance sheet. Whereas purchasing accounting is to optimize the spend actually. And I have done it. And then my students were struggling like anything on accrual reconciliation actually. Fine, accrual reconciliation. I have a video also on accrual reconciliation. You can just watch it also. Right? If you want to watch, what, what you can do is you can go there. And then in this place, fine, go there. So you'll now say reconciliation, recon. If you go on and write it, what happens? You'll be finding fine, purchasing accounting, uh, result, uh, result accounting reconciliation there. Well, not everything has been posted now, fine. Only two of two, one of two is uh, for the setups, and then two of two is for transaction actually. So likewise, what happens? You'll now find it a lot of things. Fine, go then query on my channel, fine. And then if you enter, uh, there'll be plenty of things that are available. Fine, more than 300 videos are there. So they will all be of a great help to you also. <laughs> Uh, okay, fine. This is on the P2P process section. <clears throat> now, uh, we will now begin our activity on the expense destination purchases. So, before which, what happens? You go there. Uh, I have one, uh, what happens in the additional docs records four and go the double corner. And then here we have got the what's called not this one, uh, not uh, additional records doc five. Fine, additional docs records five. You can go that corner. In this one, what happens? We have one asset expense items and subliminals. Double corner. So, this is the basic thing. Fine. Many people doesn't understand this at all. So if you don't understand it, you will not be able to do things very proper. So I have now uh, made a typical uh, example of an industry actually. Fine industry. So let us say this is a, basically for a rolling mill actually. So we are going to buy the billets from a bigger supplier. <coughs> steel billets are bought. And then we are going to heat it in the furnace and then you are going to roll it into steel rods actually. The famous business actually. So billets are purchased in the market is a big one. And then uh, you will now heat it. And then finally, you will now roll it in the rolling mill actually. So funnels will be heating it. So kerosene is an asset item. And so what happens if we buy it, let's say uh, 10,000 liters or uh, 50,000 liters we are going to buy. And then we are going to charge on the furnace for heating it. So whenever you issue this kerosene into your furnace, furnace is basically a whip now. Fine. So kerosene is now issued a whip. So naturally what happens, this transaction is known as what? Asset into asset sub inventory actually. So, so VIP is also asset sub inventory. Right? So this transaction is known as asset and asset. So this comes at number one. So this is the five different types of transactions, asset and asset sub inventory. So sometimes what happens, you will know, issue it for maintenance actually. So maintenance is basically an expense sub inventory. So you are expensing, let's say, 50 liters or 100 liters of kerosene to the maintenance sub inventory. So you are expensing it out. 50 liters of kerosene is expensed out. Uh, so they are maintained for lubrication and cleaning purposes of the furnace actually. So it will be used. 
So this transaction is known as what? Asset into expense subunitary that comes in the number. So the steel billets is also asset item. So asset and asset. Fine. Now, once when the rods are made, what happens? You are going to bundle it with a steel rope, actually. The steel rope is very less in price, actually. So this item itself is an expense item. So normally, what happens? The expense items are very low in price, actually. But not always, actually. It is not always. Fine. So these expense items will be, what happens? This is an expense item. And then rolling mill is an asset. Fine. So when you transact the rolls, uh, what happens? The, the expense item of a, uh, what happens? You are this thing now, fine. So packing steel ropes, packing rope, you're going to do it in the rolling mill. Then this comes out of the third category called expense item at assets of inventory. Right. And then this is the one, fine. Now, when a new employee is joining, I will be having a new hire kit, fine. Uh, so I'll be giving a laptop to him. I will not give a suitcase. I will not give so many items to him. So a new hire kit will be given to him for starting his activity, actually. So what happens? These things will be normally an expense item. Even though a laptop is costing 50,000 rupees, fine. It's a very high uh, price. But what happens? This laptop is not going to participate in the in the your manufacturing process at all. In the manufacturing process, it is not going to participate. So some companies will be uh, making it as an expense item. So the expense items need not always be a low cost item actually. It may be on a high cost item because if it is not directly participating on your manufacturing, what happens? It is not necessary to track the cost of this. So this will be decided by the cost accountants. The cost accountant will decide whether the item has to be an expense item or an asset item actually. <coughs> <laughs> for example, I'm manufacturing monitors. So I'm going to fix up 20 screws into the picture tube, into the frame, actually. So these 20 screws today is going to cost me 5 paisa each. And then the whole cost of uh, manufacturing of a monitor is now around 2,000 rupees. And then what happens, I will be selling with a 30% profit. And then I will announce that what happens, the price is around, say, 2,500. But if you roll up the cost of the screws also, it comes to about 2,001. Fine. 20 screws will cost you 1 rupee. So there is an insignificant cost actually. So cost accounting is always approximate, right? whereas financial accounting is exact. Even if you spend one paisa, you have to make a voucher and then post it in the ledger actually. So financial accounting is exact, whereas cost accounting is approximate actually. So I will not ignore the one rupee cost of your manufacturing, and then I will not consider only 2,000, upon which what happens, we will not apply our margin of 30% or 40%, and then we will not design the selling price. So cost accounting will now help you in what happens at designing your sales price, actually. And apart from that, how much of money is being spent can be very well analyzed, actually. <clears throat> so there are very many, there are very many methods of uh, doing the costing, actually. Standard costing, average costing, the first in, first out costing. So the last in, first out costing is yet to come in fusion, actually, as well as the periodic average costing is also yet to come. So they'll be coming very soon. They're all available in eBiz. Basically. Every future of eBiz is not yet confined. It's not coming, actually. So this, is what is. so this activity is called expense into asset act. Expense into expense act. They are coming as a fourth. The fourth one transaction is what expense into expense. And then another day, I have a stationery shop where I have got papers, uh, pen, pencil, sharpeners, etc., etc. And then normally what happens? You won't track it at all. Fine. Whenever anybody walks into the stationery shop, they will not pull whatever papers they want, and then they will not go away. They will not write in any of that whatever the registers basically that they have taken. So at any point of time, you may not be knowing how much of paper is there. So it is basically a non-tracked expense supplementary. Actually. Yeah, expense supplementary will be non-tracked so that you will not be knowing it. And then every Wednesday, we'll now ask an inspector to go and then make an inspection about how much of paper is remaining. So only during counting, what happens, they will not understand the stock. Actually. So you perform a counting that is called replenishment counting. So once when you perform a replenishment counting, they will not wait. And then afterwards, what happens, they will not make a purchase order for us. So this is called a non-tracked expense sub inventory. So that comes under the fifth transaction. So these are the only five transactions which take place in the industry. In industry, what happens? Asset into asset, asset into expense, and then expense into asset, and then expense into expense, and then what happens? You are non-tracked expense. <clears throat> but when you make a financial transaction, what happens? The inventory valuation to offset will be hit, and then that will be used for financial accounting. Right? But your purchasing transactions is mainly meant for what? Optimization of your spend actually. Got it, number. Any doubts on this now? So these are all called what happens your inventory destination. Actually. If the destination type is going to be inventory, you will not perform all these transactions. All these transactions will not. And then there is one more destination called expense actually. Let us say I am a trader. <clears throat> so what I do is uh, I have a Ames Hospital is there. Right? They are asking me to what happens the supply hand gloves, needles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I buy from a bigger supplier, and then I will ask the supplier to directly drop ship into the hospital. Actually, <coughs> he will not be drop shipping it to the hospital. Actually, so once when you do it, 
what happens i will now he will now raise a bill to me i will not pay him and then i will now raise a bill to the customer actually the aims hospital i will not raise a bill so this way it works actually so this hospitals are known as what expense destination because they don't have anything to do in our manufacturing activity at all so whenever any location is external to your company they are all known as expense destination and then the whole pr and po is basically location based right whereas in ebus it's org based whereas in fusion it's all location based actually in fusion everything is location based even though org is there <clears throat> but what happens uh, org is like a dummy actually right it doesn't have, it doesn't play much of a big role at <clears throat> in a house what happens uh, the husband is basically a dummy piece <clears throat> say for example if you ask the husband to go on then buy the milk he will know obediently go on then buy the milk and then come back he will not go to the grocery shop he will know what happens uh, wash the vessels whatever instructions you are giving it he will know it but uh, even though he is the head of the family uh, what happens uh, the wife will not give him much of a power she only decides all the household matters she only will decide so the wife is a center point of a, of a family actually whereas the husband is there but he is also there but uh, not having much of a uh, what happens a significance as such similarly we have org here <clears throat> but org is not significant at all as far as pr and po is concerned only location is significant actually. location is significant so we make the purchases based upon location even though org is there in the background actually. Right. Any doubts on this? No, first of all, the basic thing of what, whereas receiving is org specific, whereas procurement is what location specific. Actually. <laughs> Good. So you're not having much of a doubt on this. No, thank you. So now we are going to concentrate on the expense destination. So once when you make a location, what happens? We have to make a tie to the org. So location organization tie is a mandatory one as far as fusion is concerned, whereas uh, that is optional. Right? Only for IR, ISO, and EBIS, what happens? We have to tie the location to R. Whereas in here, every location has to be tied to R. So then only what happens? We can make the inventory destination purchases with it. And then if it is going to be an expense, the location will not be tied to any org at all because it is outside of a company. So it is outside. So expense destination locations will never be tied at all. So they will be free locations actually. They will never be free. So they are all free locations and then they will not be tied to any org. So if a location is not tied to any org, it is automatically an expense destination. The location is expense destination. <clears throat> Can somebody say yes to me till now? We understood it, whatever I told. Is it clear? Are you all hearing me first of all? Yes, no, no. So this is clear now, right? So till now, whatever I told is clear, is it? Yeah. No doubts. Now, what happens? I am now going to concentrate on the expense. So, as far as inventory is concerned, fine. There are what happens? Uh, these five transactions are basically possible. Fine. These five transactions are basically, and then this is possible for expense destination also. For expense destination also, all the five are basically possible. Fine. Everything is possible. And then apart from that, there is one more thing. Fine. So here, what happens? We will now buy fine inventory items. Fine. This is called asset items. So we are going to buy what asset item? <clears throat> And then expense items. And then service items. <clears throat> service purchases, we call this. So, if, for example, I'm now going to order an AMC contract to a supplier. Right? And then I'm offering what I was a cable laying contract to the supplier. So, these things will come under service purchases, basically. So, these are the basic three types of what happens are purchases you will now make in an organization, actually. So these three are basically applicable for both inventory as well as expense distribution. Right? All the three are applicable for both actually. For expense also, what happens? We will not find all the three things. And then for inventory also, we will not find. And then there are basically five, and then plus the service actually. And then uh, when I conduct a training, what happens? I will not because mainly what happens will be they will be concentrating on the purchasing accounting actually. Accounting is very very important because we have to optimize the spend actually. When I conduct a purchasing training, what happens? If you go there, I will not have. I will, not go to the, I will not go to the fusion procurement documentation. So I have one accounting accounting document is there. Fusion purchasing accounting. So double comma. So here, uh, depending upon the need by the end client, what happens? They will now say that whenever you are transacting an asset element and asset sub inventory, they want a specific account to hit actually. For, for every sub inventory, also they may give an account. And then asset item and an expense of inventory when you're transacting it, they may even give account. So that what happens, they will not take a report on the account so that they can understand about how much of money has been spent. And remember, this has got no financial impact at all. Financial impact is not there. It is only for the purchasing team. 
And then if they have specified certain sub inventories, and then if the sub inventory is not specified, it will now be hitting a general account, fine, at the org level, actually. <laughs> so a particular sub inventory, they may like to have an account only for certain sub inventories, but if they say that sub inventory is not there, then what happens? It will be hitting it. Similarly, for the expense, what happens? We have got three, these three transactions. And then afterwards, for the services, what happens? The employee who is now creating the requisition will become responsible. Let's say I am now creating what happens an AMC contract. So I will have an expense account defined on my uh, employee screens actually. So that account will be hit. And tomorrow, tomorrow, what happens? The management can very well see that Nana has now raised the AMC contract in this month. He has now asked for a cable laying, and then some of the services he has asked for. So the whole month, <coughs> how much of money has been spent by me? <coughs> For the company actually and then they may even question me right if the expenses are too much for the month they will now ask me why this much of a money is being said i have to give a reasoning and then later on what happens that so the purpose of tracking these expenses this, uh, what happens these accounts is only to what optimize your purchases basically it has got no impact on the financials actually, right? no impact on the financials so what happens that there are very many methods fine so i normally used to demonstrate all these things in a what's called in a procurement training actually. So we buy what happens uh, these three items are fine. These three items are being purchased. One is what asset item, and then one is an expense item, and then one is a service purchase section. So this training is going to concentrate on destination as expense section. Destination expense. Fine. So I will now first of all create a location called Ames Hospital. Fine. That is the expense destination. And then I will not associate to any of the org section. So you go that click on it. And then if you go back one level, no, you go, it. You go back one level. <clears throat> So here, whatever I go to the fourth one, addition locks records fourth and go to the corner. And then here I got the third one called Vision Enterprises. So Vision is now working on this. Vision is working like this. So we have a what's called a ledger as US primary ledger, ready-made available. The chart of accounts is available, legal entities available, the business unit, the master org and child dog, everything is available. <laughs> So now what you have to do is what? Whenever you make an expense purchase, fine. so it should not hit any of your inventory org at all because it is outside of our place. Actually. <clears throat> and so we have to receive only on the master log. So we have to receive on the master log. So there is one thing called what? There is one setup there. Now go to this place and then have a look at the setup. So you have one setup where what happens? We have to receive on the master log. Actually. Click on it. It's called configure requisitioning business function. And what is the relevant business? <clears throat> so in my case, what happens? Uh, my master org is going to be 000 in vision actually. So I will now go to the configure requisitioning business function. Search for it. And then go to the configure <laughs> requisitioning business function. So I go to the configure requisitioning business function. I go there. And then here, the default delivered org. I will now go for US1 business unit. Right? US1 business unit. So this is the one now. Right? This is the vision. Try and go there. Point. Then go there. So the default delivered organization must be what? Uh, I will now say may, maybe 000. Find go there. Drop it out. And then make a search. Now click on search. Fine. If you put 000 as R, it won't be visible at all. Fine. Click on search. Because vision works for all the modules. That, for example, Oracle Retail Management is there in CRM. So there, what happens, they will now create all the items on the master, and then they will now show it to the customers on the retail area, and then the selling team will be showing all the items, and then is a description, long description, the photograph, everything, they will now show. But afterwards, the transactions are performed by retail management, actually, not by your supply chain, actually. So for which, what happens, they will now create this as an item R, because they don't want any transaction at all. So no transaction uh, after creating the item, actually. So, but item org will not work for your, uh, this thing, fine. For this expense destination purchases, item org will not work. So, uh, you need what? <coughs> the item org will not work. For expense destination, what about we have to receive in the master org. Remember, master org, we don't have any transaction at all. But expense destination purchases will be hitting only the master org because it will not hit any of the sub inventories actually. <coughs> so, in this case, what happens? People will not compromise on this. So, they will not compromise it. They will now make the default delivery organization what either a 004 or Atlanta 001 only you can make. So if you're making a 001, then what happens? The accounting will all happen on 001 or so material audit will object it actually. When the material audit is saying, ah, there's nothing received really on the sale. Right? Why these transactions are coming? 
you know, made hand gloves, needles, etc. You have purchased, and then everything will be accounted against CET lecture. <clears throat> and then you have to give an answer. So, because what happens? We have retail management also available, and so what happens? The mass org is created as item R, and so we are putting one of the uh, what happens? One of the what is called your uh, your uh, other org, other child dogs as one of the things, and then uh, we have to compromise on this one fine? because both the models cannot work together actually. So, for which what happens? You know, made it. So, if you don't have such a requirement, then what happens? You convert that into your, what's called, you go there, I will not convert the item org into your, what's called your inventory org. But based upon the need, what happens? You have to convince the audit also. Right? So, because of which only we are not receiving on one of the child orgs, fine. Right? So, don't uh, make low, don't make too much of a noise actually, fine. Right? Expense decision. I'm not making it as a child. One of the childs I'm making it now. Right? Uh, because what happens? I need retail management also to work. So, if some of the models are going to work, fine, right? you have to have it as item org. And then one more requirement is that if you have got multiple alias, right? If you have multiple alias, fine. If you have multiple alias, fine. And then all of them are using, going to use the same master. So if a master org has to be shared across multiple alias, let's say this is going to be Reliance Power, fine. It's going to be Reliance Chemicals, Reliance Petrochemicals. So you got so many alias, and then all of them you want to have a common master. <clears throat> so once when you want to have a common master, so if you go and then see in this place, no, fine. If you want, if you go and then see, if you go there and then I will not right click and then duplicate. Go there, right click and duplicate. Every inventory org will be having a LEB association actually. Go there, go to the manage inventory. You go to the setup and maintenance, and then you go to the manage inventory org. So click on search now, and go to the manage inventory org. So once when you're creating it, you have to say to which org it is not working up. I will not say 001. Now go there. I'm sorry for it. So 001 is the one. The organization code actually. Zero, zero, one, and go there and then search for it. So go that one. So every inventory org has to get associated to what? One LE and then one B. This is for financial reporting actually. For financial reporting, we have got one more thing, fine. One is the management business unit and then one is the profit center business unit. So, the one. so LE, every LE, every inventory org will be reporting to what? One LE and then do it. But in your case, Fine. If you're going to have this now, fine. if you have multiple LEs, Reliance Power wants to have the same master, <coughs> Reliance Chemicals, Petrochemicals, fine. Reliance Textiles, everything you want to have a common master, <coughs> what happens, we cannot get the master as an inventory org at all. Not possible. Because when you create it, it has to report to a particular LE only. But if multiple LEs are going to have a common one, what you will do is you will now go there, right click on the duplicate. You will now create the master as an item org actually. That is the only way you can do because your purpose is to what? Share the master. Because item master may be having 150 to 200, 200,000 items. So huge amount of items. We cannot keep on repeatedly creating it actually. So you want to share the master org across multiple LEs. Then what happens? You have to go for this one. Click on it. I will not go there. Click on it. So click on setup and maintenance. And then I will not create manage item org. Click on search. <clears throat> So go to the manage item or go there. So click on it. I will not show you the 000 or there is a master thing. Click on search. But since it's a vision, they have to have all the thing now. Fine, go there. Click on it in. Click on it. And they cannot see that what happens. The usage is there. Fine, the item management. Fine, go there. Headquarters is the basic location. Location is the headquarters. So it will not have any L E and B at all. It will not have any L E and B because what happens? You want to have a master. Which has to share across multiple LEs. In which case, what happens? You will not create an item R. So, in which case, what happens? You have to convince the audit. Fine, convince the audit that what happens? I will be receiving it on one of the child only. Fine. Yeah. If it is the item R, we cannot put it on this place. No. Item R, if it is there, fine. you cannot put it on this place. In this place, what happens? You go to the config request, you cannot put this. So, master R cannot be put. So, we have to uh, forcibly, what happens, make a transaction or other. All your expense destination purchases has to be accounted against one of the child only. So they will agree. Okay, it doesn't matter. Fine. Expense because, uh, because of the need, what happens if we are now creating it as an item master, as an item org. Item org. So this is the one. Fine. Go there. So uh, need-based, what happens a master org. Sometimes what happens the master org has to be item org. So if it is gone, what happens we have to account all your expense transaction against one of the child organizations. <clears throat> so for my training, what happens? I will not change it to what? Inventory org. Go there. So my training, I go there. So is the item management. So I will not go there and then change the inventory or click on it. Is the inventory management. So here in the field, you should not do like this. So the management will not decide whether to have an item org or inventory org. So only the drawback is what in the configure requisitioning function, the master org cannot be there. 
So it, all, it is only for accounting purposes. And then if you convince them, audit, fine, they will not say, okay, fine. You account everything, I guess, one child. Actually. I will not say you as one. <clears throat> Thank you. Because one of my students was using only item arg as a master argument because they have multiple things which are coming about. So legality drop down, fine. I will not choose the legality. So once when you make it as an inventory arc, then what happens? The management business unit and then the legal entity are becoming mandatory actually. They are becoming mandatory. Whereas an item org is not mandatory at all. So it's not becoming mandatory. So I'm now converting it. We can very well convert at any point of time an item management in inventory management. One of my students had a problem with the item org. So his fixed assets is going to pick up things only from the master. And then if it's an item org, what happens? The, the sales account is getting grayed out in the master. It's available only on the child. But it always refers only the master. So there will be so many such things. That whatever that any point of time, you can very well convert the item R to inventory R. Fine, go there. You can do it. And then there is no harm at all. Nothing will happen. Fine. None, all the transactions, whatever you have done, there won't be any problem at all. You can very well do it. So it is located at headquarters. Headquarters is location. Fine, go there. If you see this diagram, fine, go there. So it is at headquarters. Location is headquarters. This is an ambition. In reality, what happens, it will be different. So it's okay, fine. Other, if it is not there, you can put the location also. And then click on the next. No, fine. Click on the next. And then once when you're converting inventory management, what was it? We had to give other things also. The master of my on next now. So go to the next, and then here what I'm saying, this is the operations and this is the operations. Everything is operation. Schedule also is required. Okay? The mandatory one. And I'll say a ready-made schedule is available. <laughs> operations is schedule. And then locator control will be normally dedicated to the sub level. And then organization may be a manufacturing plant or a maintenance plant, whatever you want to give. And then give a save and close by which what happens. The item org is now getting converted in inventory org. It may not be required at every every implementation actually. Is it clear? Any doubts on this now? First of all, anybody has got any doubts? Good. I'm converting it only for my uh, understanding. But if they have created it, the only drawback is what? It will all be accounted against the child org. Fine. Accounting will not take place. Fine. For all your expense destination purchases, fine. Everything will be accounted against the site if it is the item org. Fine. If the audit is okay, or other you have to convince them. Fine. Your requirement also, you have to convince them that what happens, you will be accounting against the site. So click on save and close. Now, the 000 has now become an item inventory org. Save and close every So click on now what I do is I go there, I go to the config program. Now if I go on and search for the 000, it will be available. Click on search, it will be available. I click on search now. <laughs> I don't say 000, it will be available. So here, what happens, we can put it. So now accounting will not take place on the mass structure. It need not be, fine. But uh, it is uh, preferable. That is what Oracle says, fine. Preferably accounted because it is go not going to be accounted. It should not be accounted like any other, any other child structure. So expense destination purchases must be accounted against master. So it's a separate one. And so we are doing operations one. I click on save and close by which whatever the, the configure requisitioning business function is now pointing to my master. And this becomes a default of, or, or org for the purchase orders. For the purchase orders, this becomes the default. I click on save and close. The default org for the purchase orders. And remember, in this place, what happens every org will be having a location actually. If you go on and see so my, every org will be having a location. If you go to the what's called uh, management org. So every org will be having a circle is the org. Fine. It is now having a location. And then even though we are mentioning on the org the location name, there is an explicit tie is there. Fine. Right click and then duplicate. You have to make an explicit tie actually. <laughs> a tie is a mandatory one. Even though the org is now pointing to a location. Fine. We have to explicitly tie this to a location. Answer up and so click on it. You don't go there. Click on search. Right? <clears throat> I will not say manage locations. <clears throat> manage locations the one. So, so go to the place. Right? I will not query for the Seattle actually. The location name is Seattle. Fine. Seattle. And then query for it. Right? Click on search. You will not find. So the Seattle location is coming. Because it's a vision. Fine. There will be so many things are there. So I will not choose. I don't know which one they are using. I will not go to the edit and then go to correct. Now. Click on correct. You will not find the inventory org is not associated with. If you don't do the tie, the supply chain will not work at all. And the supply chain to work properly, what happens there? We have to perform a location organization tie. Whereas this is mandatory only for IR, ISO, and EBIS. Here it is mandatory for all the supply chain transactions. All the supply chain transactions needs an explicit tie action. Now you see, there's no tie to inventory org. And then if you go and then look at the headquarters, now fine. Headquarters will not be tied at all. Right? If you go to the headquarters, you go there. So here, operations is the headquarters. If you go and then query this headquarters, right? it will not have any type because we are, it is a, it will not be there. You may even tie, it doesn't matter, fine. You, uh, you may even tie, 
headquarters you can type fine there is no harm at all because you are not going to perform any transactions basically and anymore but what happens it will normally will not have a tie you will not see whether they have given any tie or not all the child dogs has to have a tie now when you come at quarter and pulling it and go to the edit and then click on correct now see whether they have tied to the master or not they are not tied it fine doesn't matter but when i am creating what a aims hospital location it should never be tied at all the expense destination should never be tied the master may be tied but the expense destination should not be tied so first of all let us now go on and create our expense destination Let us now go on and create my expense destination. The Ames Hospital. <clears throat> so I am now going to ask the supplier to deliver to the Ames Hospital, and so what happens? The address will be very perfect. Right? Click on that, and then go there. Go down, right? Click on the create. <clears throat> so I, for my convenience, what happens? I will now begin everything with the A zero one as a prefix. Now, right? I will now say A Ames Ames Hospital. Ames Hospital location. So I'm not creating a you know, Ames hospital location. I'm going to create my tiger COVID. And then your master org may be having a tie, but this expense destination should not have a tie at all. Thank you very much. I have not put that one. I mean, put the appropriate address for the supplier to what happens. The supplier directed to them. It is basically sort of a drop ship, actually. It is not actually a drop ship because the drop ship comes from the sales, actually. But uh, the purpose is basically a drop ship. But what happens? They will be raising the invoices separately. He will not raise the invoice unless and then we will not raise the invoice in the customer. So they are all done. I will not say A01. Fine. Uh, I will now say expense destination address one. And then I go there. So go there. I will now create an expense location. And then this should never be tied to an inventory org at all. If it is not tied, automatically what happens? It is uh, apart from master, it becomes an expense destination. So A zero one Ames Hospital destination is now made now. Click on it. So go there. It is now submitted now. Okay, come okay. We'll now query whether the location is not created properly or not. Fine. A zero one is the one. Fine. Make a search. Okay, click on search. No point. I don't know. It's created. <clears throat> so it is not there. So you will be using a common set. Fine. Right? Any doubts still now? Fine. So the expense destination is created which is without having any association to any inventory or argument. Now, what happens? My configure requisitioning business function is now pointing to master. So whenever a PR or a PO is created, it will be accounted against master. Remember. Any doubts on this one? Is, is so, that a good practice, Nana? It is a correct practice actually. If you okay. account it on any of the child, because because of some problems, like what happens, you have a retail management is also installed, and then you have multiple alias commoning, making a common master. So in that case, what happens? The master will be an item R. So in which case, what happens? It will all be accounted as against one, one of the child one. <coughs> all your expense destination purchases will be accounted <coughs> only on the child. <coughs> So you have to convince the material audit that what happens there because of certain restrictions we are making the master org as item R and so we cannot put it on this place at all. In the manage what happens if you go there click on it uh, on the what's called where is that yeah on the what's called if you go to the maintenance in the configure requisitioning business function we cannot put a master at all because of certain restrictions we are not uh, unable to do it. They will agree doesn't matter because accounting is only for what happens our internal verification thing. I am not able to put a master because by retail management is there, and then one master org is being shared by multiple entities, and so what happens? My master is item org and not an inventory org. And so in that case, what happens? They will agree. They will agree for all transactions getting accounted on one of the child's actually. So it is your responsibility. Now for my uh, what happens? The real purpose is what? It must be an inventory org, and then what happens? If there is no other restriction, make it as only an inventory org. Make the master as an inventory org. So now I made it. So all my accounting will not take place on the operations or and then which is having the location as headquarters. Headquarters location. The headquarters location. So what happens? You'll be making your purchases. The PR and PO are location specific. No, fine. Even though org is there, org is in the background. No, fine. Org is like a husband, a dummy piece in there. What happens in the entire one. Whereas receiving is org specific. Receiving will now make place only in the org specific. Whereas the PR and PO are location specific. Any doubts on this? No, fine. Because people are having lots of doubts. And then uh, when I discuss with them, then I understand that what happens, they are not understood the concept clearly. Right? That is why what happens, I am now putting a lot of stress on this. Now, Thank you so on. much, Nana. So can we not have a dummy org instead of master org? Can we not have master a... Master org itself is a dummy org. So we are using that master only. <laughs> but okay. you can also create one dummy org and then account it against that. Correct. Only people don't yeah. do the master itself. Is all, is so he... That way you can overcome the auditing also, right? 
you can also create one dummy org only for your expense purchases and then put it as what happens that a child or in the config requisite and then account it against this. But it is the usual practice to what happens the account everything against the master. Mm -hmm. It all depends upon the need and need based uh, ones. If you are making it as an item org, then naturally you have to account on only the, only the child org only. If it is an inventory org, we can very well what happens the, do the accounting on the master. So all the flexibilities are there. You decide on a case-to-case -case basis on the field, actually, what you want to do. You can even have one child org as a dummy org only for accounting or expense destination purchases. You can do it. Correct. The only thing is, if it is an inventory org, we can very well create a sub-inventory and then make a transaction. In an item org, we cannot create a sub-inventory at all. It's a foolproof method of stopping any transactions. with it. So now, uh, what happens? Uh, if it is an inventory org, I can very well create a sub-inventory and then make a transaction. So, but now what happens? My master is an inventory org, but I will never create a sub inventory at all. Right? I will not create a sub inventory. Right? Uh, EBIS, we don't have this concept at all item org and inventory org. Everything is an inventory org. So, they have introduced the inventory item org only for CRM. CRM retail needs an item org. And then here also, multiple LEs may also may have a share, a common master org for which what happens? You have to go for item org. So, need based what happens? You'll be creating it actually. So, all the flexibilities are shown to you and decide in the field what you want to do. Now, for demonstration of my expense purchases, what I'm going to do is I will not create one answer enough. Let us say they want the Ames Hospital wants a CT scan machine. Right? Let me go on and create an answer item. Now go there. I will not create an answer. I will not right click and then duplicate. And then I will not create one answer item. Three things I am going to make now. Thank you. <clears throat> I will not go there. So now what happens? It is already made as a master. So I will not click on the home icon. <clears throat> I will not click on the home icon. And then I go to the product management. And then I go to the product information management. <clears throat> product management, product information management. There, I am now going to create one asset item from the beginning. Thank you. I click on create. I will not choose my master here. No? I will not choose my master 000. 000. zero. And then remember, the CT scan machine will not be used in my inventory at all. Fine, none of the inventories are going to use it. When the hospital needs a CT scan machine. So I will not be assigned this item to any of the inventory orgs. Fine. Let us say, if it is going to be a laptop, so my company uh, inventory orgs also may be using it. In which case, what happens, I will be assigning it to a child. Fine. If it is purely for ex external locations, then I will never assign it to the child also. Go oh, there, the one. Go oh, class. Everything is coming. Go oh, there. Okay. So click on OK. Fine. I, I click on S now. Fine. I will now say the E01 CT scan. This item is going to be used only with the, I'm going to supply it to the hospitals only and nowhere else. In which case, whatever they go there, I will now say E01. I will now say CT scan machine. The one now, right? CT scan machine. I'm now buying only for the Ames Hospital. Go there. It will not be used in my inventory arc. So go there, take over it, and then put the description now. It's going to be an asset item. Fine. Go to the specifications. Fine. Put on the specifications. And then when the specifications you go, you'll be in the manufacturing. Fine. Go there. So the inventory asset value is enabled means what? It is an asset item. Fine. If it is a no, it is an expense. So it is an inventory asset asset item. Asset item. And remember, since we are going to transact on the master, we will not make any physical result at all on the master. We will not make a sell service results. Fine. So. Once when I supply it to Ames Hospital, what happens? I will now perform a cell service receipt, and then that will be getting accounted on the master. Actually. It will not make any physical receipt because master org will not have any sub inventory at all. Got it now? In it house. So I will now make only what? Yeah, cell service receipts for all the expense destinations. Actually. So is the item fine? I will not give a save. I will not give a save. I will not do any association to child because it is not required in any of the sub inventories. But in case if a sub inventory also needs this item, then I have to go to the association. Otherwise, what I was saying, normally, usually, the expense destination purchases will be created only in the master. Right? It will never be assigned to any child. So need-based. Everything is need-based. You decide based on if you want to do it, the laptop will be assigned to child. So go there. If you go to the associations, you will not associate any other child. Normally, what happens, you go there. You go to the actions and go to select that. You will be associating a child. Let's say zero, zero. Then go there, select it. And then go there, select and then click on apply. Then click on done and go that. So it gets associated. But this is not going to be used by any inventory or means what? We will never assign it at all. I will not give a cancel actually. So my item is now available only in the master and not on the child actually. But if required, what happens? You have to assign it to the <clears throat> so, 
So it is not only for the expense destination purchases, but for the self service procurement also. You go there. Self service procurement also needs only the item to be assigned to the master. You want go there. You want go there. You want go to the place. So there is one uh, document, in the additional docs records four. We have the one. Right? The sixty fifth document is for the self service procurement. Double quote. So I am now uh, running a company. Uh, my manufacturing unit is in Nagpur. So uh, my centralized headquarters is in uh, what I said, in uh, in Delhi, right? Where the PR automation is set actually. In that way, Gurugram is a manufacturing facility. You want to know? And then I have my sales officers situated throughout the country, actually. Fine. So I have a marketing manager who is sitting in management, what up is that, uh, in Bombay, actually. Fine. He's down there in Bombay. And then he needs a laptop. He will now raise the requisition, and then what up is that, it will be approved, and then it will be delivered into your house, actually. Visiting cards, suitcases, desktop, I mean, etc. So, but what up is that, laptop may be needed on the Gurgaon manufacturing facility, but <laughs> visiting cards may not be needed. So, Laptop will be assigned to the child, whereas the visiting car suitcase well, then what happens, will not be assigned to the child at all. Depending upon the need base, you will be assigning it to the child or you will not keep it only at the master. <laughs> we have a sales representative in Madras. <clears throat> For him, what happens, the company says, give him only laptop, visiting cards and suitcase. Right? So if he wants a desktop, the uh, what happens, he is a lower level man, he will not be allowed to what happens, the shop for the desktop. Almera, he cannot do it. So there will be so many restrictions of that. <clears throat> So there, what happens, we will now create a catalog category hierarchy where, what happens, different people will be assigned the top category, actually, depending upon their position in the company. So they will be able to shop more if they are in a higher level. So that will be fully taught in a self service procurement. Actually. So this is also equivalent to what your, uh, what's called, your uh, is expense destination purchases where, what happens, whenever a visiting card is ordered, the employee will be receiving it in his uh, Bombay office, in his Bombay residence, actually. And then it will be account, accounted against the master org actually. And as uh, Venkat was saying, we can even create one dummy child org for accounting all these expense purchases. Basically. So it, you have to discuss with them and then say about how you want to do it. Accordingly, you can even put that dummy org as a, what happens, the default deliver to org. So the default deliver to org on the configure requisitioning business function, it will be accounted against that org actually. Any doubts? So both for SSV purchases as well as external registration purchases, this becomes important. So now I created. Now I will now create one expense purchase. I will not say hand gloves. I will not create a hand gloves. I will not create a. So go there. Hand gloves is required for the Ames Hospital actually. Zero zero zero. Go there. Fine. Choose it now. Choose it. And then go there. So okay, now okay, now fine. I am not going to create a hand gloves. It is required for that. Ames Hospital Lecture. Again, not required for ours. No, fine. A01, I'll now say hand gloves. Mm -hmm. So we buy it from a bigger supplier and ask him to drop ship at that. Uh, what happens? Your uh, uh, Ames Hospital location, actually. So go there. So since I have applied the purchase template, everything is there. In the specific cases, if you go there, fine. Go there. So here, what happens? I'll now make it as the expense. The costing, what happens? I'll now make it as the expense. So inventory asset value is no means what? It is an expense item, actually. And then if you go to the inventory, normally what happens, all the four will be on now. And then I go to the purchasing, I'm going to click on the purchasing. I will not give a list price also. And purchasing price is what? One dollar. This price is not good. I'm not going to assign it to the channel. I click on save and close. <coughs> the previous also, I will not give a list price actually. That will not default onto the requisitions section. So go there, click on it. I will not go to the browser items, I'm going to click on the browser items and go there. I will not go there and do it. No, I click on the browse items. And then here, yeah, I will not query for the A01. No, I created two items actually. I will not choose the first item actually. The CT scan machine, fine, click on it. I will not give a list price also. <coughs> so the, the hand gloves is costing $1. I go to the specifications and then go there. I will not go to the word purchasing and then give a list price already $100. Something, $1,000. Go there. So this will be getting default on the requisitions and purchase order. So click on something else. So these two items are created. So now what happens, I'm now going to perform a what happens, a requisition creation way. So now Nana, one small question, Nana. Um, so if we if we create a dummy arc, then we need to associate this item, these two items yeah, yeah, to the yeah. dummy arc. These two arc. items to the dummy arc, of course, naturally. If you're creating okay, a thank you. you want to account it on a dummy arc, then these two items must be associated to the dummy arc actually. It's all field based decisions actually. The way in which the incline wants it, whatever you have to discuss the financials also. 
financial will say, okay, fine, create one dummy or and then what happens? Uh, do all the activities on the dummy or for only expense purchases on the SSP receipt sector. <laughs> Depend, depending on the need. But it is a usual practice to what happens use the master because master is not used by anything. And then we can very well what happens the perform a receipt on the master structure. And then use it only for expense purchases and SSP purchases basically. But again, it's a basically a field decision, right? depending upon how the end client wants accordingly. And then the financials, the ultimate authority will be deciding the configuration of your what happens your accounting actually. So you have to discuss them and then accordingly do it. <clears throat> But do not there use no opening of periods, also, right? Now, there is no period no at all. Inventory and purchasing do not have any periods at all. Fine. We can very well perform the transactions at any time. No periods are there on inventory. Only costing is having a period. Costing is having a period. Inventory and purchasing do not have any periods in fusion. Mm -hmm. There are so many. And we are not going to associate costing or costing books to this master org also. No, right? no, no. We are not it's again a big subject now. Yeah. Talk to Tijil. Tijil will contact a lot of things on this one. Costing itself is a big subject. Fine, go there. We have to we have to cost it. Fine. Everything has to be costed actually. So costing part will be conducted with Tijil. Tijil will be teaching you everything on this. He is an expert. He is a cost accountant actually. He is working in a company as a cost accountant. And so what happens? He will now do the complete training on cost management. Fine. Supply chain cost management will be taught by him fully. Fine, but I am not touching that part. Okay, fine. I hope that this is now clear now. Fine. So you can have this is the item org or otherwise the inventory org, depending upon the need actually. Fine. Well, in one of the client location, what happens? My student who is in Eng who she is in England actually. So they have configured the master org as an item org. Now, now what to do? It doesn't matter. They are now accounting on one of the child actually, man. So they might have discussed with the financials that what happens, all the expense purchases and SSP purchases will be accounted against the check. So the client might have agreed because of which what happened, they made the master org as an item org. So master org as item org, if one LE, multiple LEs are going to say the, say the same, same master, it has to be an item org only. You cannot have it as an inventory org. Because every inventory org will be having what? They're reporting to LE and BU. And then if you're having multiple LEs using the same master, fine. then the case what happens, it has to be an item org. So there are so many such restrictions are there because of which whatever they do. Okay, fine. So there's no look. So two items are created and then they are not assigned to any child. Actually. Now I'm going to set up my preferences basically. So I will not go on that. I will, before I shop it, what happens? I click on it. I'm not going to perform a shopping actually. So you go to the procurement of that. Now what happens? The requisition is now going to change as what? Your responsive self-service procurement. If you click on the purchase requisition, it is called responsive self service procurement fine or SSP. Fine. <laughs> click on it. <laughs> requisition will be coming via the screen actually from January. From January 25, this will be fully yeah, what happens is functional actually. As of now, it is not fully functional. So the responsive SSP is now what happens is getting configured. So for the client to have a look and feel, what happens is they have added this. So you have to learn this one. I have to learn it actually. So, but the original one is also there. The original one is there. I click on the home now. I click on the home. So the original one is also there. After January 25, the original one will not be there at all. Only this will be there actually. So in the left-hand side, what happens? If you go there, there will be a shop icon. The shop icon is for the present one. If it is not there, you go to show more and then go to the shop. So the first activity is to set the preferences basically. Right? For every purchase, you have to set up the preference. Now I want to what? make a purchase for the Ames Hospital. Ames Hospital. So go click on it. I will now set up my preferences basically. For each and every requisition, remember, requisition preferences has to be first set before you create a requisition. Go there. You go to the more talks and then update the requisition preferences. For each and every requisition, you have to go there and set it up. Now go there. Now go there. Now go there. Drop it on. And then go there. You will not make it as what? Not an inventory. And go there. You will not make it as an expense. And then he is a requester. It's okay. Fine. The requester has to come. Oh, yeah, my God. So the delivery location is what? I will not put my Ames Hospital location. So the supplier has to supply to this location with this address actually. The address, everything is coming. So the supplier, upon receiving the purchase order, whatever, he will not supply to us, but they will not directly supply to the Ames Hospital location actually. So the requisition is there. So for every requisition, what happens? You have to change this thing. If there is a change, if there is no change, you can even keep it as a clear on the stock right? for each and every requisition. If the problem is the same, then what happens? It's okay. Otherwise, what happens? We have to perform this change. So save and close. Again, the accounting part, what happens is all explained. Fine. Purchasing accounting, I have now explained a great depth in my purchasing training, but cost accounting will be explained with it. Save and close. Cost accounting and financial accounting will be explained. So it will be delivered to the Ames Hospital location. 
So that location is not having any org at all. Remember that location is not having any type. So if a location is not having a type to the org on the managed locations, then it becomes an expense destination. Now let us now go and then shop it. So having set up the preferences. Manager, yeah. Uh, the deliver to location type must be external here, right? Expense automatically is an external. If you make it as an expense, it is always an external location. It is not our internal location at all. Even though we are given as an internal, it doesn't matter. No, fine. It is the internal or one time, it doesn't matter. Fine. There is no such external here now. Fine. So uh, uh, he can be, he can ignore it. Fine. It is not having much of a significance actually. If it is an expense, the location is not our inventory location at all. Got it? Thank you. Thank you for cancel. Now, having set the preferences for every requisition, if there is a change, you have to go there and then make a change and then do it. <coughs> Click on it. I will not create a requisition. The first requisition I'm going to create. <laughs> I will not create a, a CD scan mission. Okay? Click on it. I'm not going to create a requisition for CD scan mission. <laughs> so now that location will be defaulting. Even for inventory also, what happens? The location will be defaulting. And then remember the PR and PO are location specific. I will not put A01. And A01, I'm going to put it in fine corner. I'm not putting A01. The city scan machine is coming. The city scan machine is coming. And then you can now see on the right hand side in the delivered location. Even for inventory, also, what happens? The location will be coming. Even though the org is on the background, it is like a dummy husband, actually. Fine. We don't concentrate on the org actually, but we'll be concentrating on the location. And then what happens? It gives you account, charge account, fine. And then if required, what happens, you can change it. Tijil will be teaching about how to set up these accounts. The transfer price is not there, fine. There's no giving error, no fine. No, okay, no, fine. Because what happens, the distance is inventory. I'll not make it as what? Supplier, actually. So make the source as a supplier. Fine. Then what happens, you'll not be having this. So make the source as a supplier. So there will not be any error at all. So how to set up the account and all, fine. Tijil will be teaching in his costing training, actually. <laughs> so go there. I'm not going to add only one quantity for 1,000 US dollars, fine. There's not got from the item price, fine. There's no comment, fine. Click on add to cart. I'm not going to add to cart. So the city scan machine is added. City scan machine is on. Next one is what? I will not add the hand gloves actually. I will again shop. So we are not adding it now. And again, on the accounting front, what happens? The charge account as well as the variance account has to be set actually. So again, attendees training, he will not teach you about how to set up those accounts actually. <clears throat> you have vision. What happens? There's so many things are automatic. So it will be coming. But what happens? You have to do it. So next one is what you go there, A01. I will not put the hand gloves. It is an expense item. The first one is an asset item. And go that corner. And then you will not change the supply type to what you will say. Because of the, what happens, your uh, template is not properly configured. The inventory is also coming. Fine, go there. So I will not make it as a supplier, actually. The inventory will not come normally. I will not say, what happens, the price is not. I will not go for 100, 100, 100. Maybe 50 pass. You have to make it as a pair also. So the account, again, what happens, is not coming. Go there. So is basically an expense fine. Again, what happens the is the hospital. Because this is on the preferences, it is coming up. <coughs> on the from the preferences. So set up the preferences first and then what happens the shop. So click on add to cart. The second item is now added to the cart. Now I will not add one service item. I will drop it down. I will not go for a fixed prices and services. Fixed prices and services. So item is not there. Fine description is what? I will not say the hospital is asking for a housekeeping service. Housekeeping services. Right? The category has to come. Right? You have to put, I will not put one category. So any description based is category specific actually. I will not say uh, uh, is a one-time price fine. Whether I will not say thousand million dollars. Negotiation required fine. Otherwise, what am I there? Negotiate, negotiate those are coming. Is all <coughs> purchasing specific? It will be taught in a purchasing training actually. <laughs> Again, for the same location, and then the charge account can be modified now. Fine, on it. And then click on add to cart. So there are three items which he is ordering. One is the what? An asset item, one is the expense item, and then one is the service item. I will not go there, click on it. No added, no fine, click on it. I will not click on the what happens the cart. No fine, click on the cart. I will not what happens, go there. I will not review it. I click on it. So it will not go there. So these three items are now meant for the hospital location, actually. And then I have already set up the approvals to automatic now. Fine. I will not make a check whether it is automatic or not. So 204143 is the one fine with it. I will not go to placement. I will not go to what your uh, uh, notepad. Notepad, I will not open it up. I will not take up the requisition number. PR number. Right. 204 143 is the one. I will, I will not set up automatic. I will not say everybody has changed or not. I will not click on the manager tools. 
I know it is automatic actually. <clears throat> so 2506 are the total cost of this purchase requisition actually. So SCM 39 is a requester. Fine. He is now creating it actually. So we'll not go there. We'll not see whether we'll not see the 204143, the automatic is coming. Otherwise, I have to again change it to automatic and then set it for approval actually. Remember, everything is meant for the expense destination. It is not our inventory location at all. It is outside of our company actually. Destination expense. So expense destination purchases, I think you have got a clear. So it is the application developer means what? It is automatic anomaly. So it's automatic. When click on submit, what happens? It will be getting submitted. So a master org can be an item org or an inventory org depending upon the need actually. Now, once when this is approved, what happens? It will be appearing on the purchasing area for converting it into a purchase order. You can even automate it actually. Automating of PR and PO will be taught in my what happens in my purchasing training fine duplicate. No go that one duplicate. So you should not say that a master org has to be only an item org or an inventory org. It is a need based basically. As Venkat was saying, we can even make one dummy child org. And then what happens? They receive everything on the configure requisitioning business function. You put the dummy child org. So whatever is there on the configure requisitioning business function, purchase orders will be created only against that org. You go to the procurement and then I go to the purchase orders. You go to the purchase orders. And go to the purchase orders. Procurement and purchase orders. And then there is one more redwood initiative is coming. Fine. For the redwood initiative, what you have to do is what initially you can even bypass that. So there is one redwood initiative is coming. You can even bypass it actually. I will not go to the setup and maintenance. Fine. Initially you bypass it because the redwood initiative is for manufacturing actually mainly. And click on it. So the manufacturing is undergoing a major change like a, this response, RSSP, responsive self-service procurement. I will not go to the manage admin profile. <coughs> I go to the manage admin profile. So go to this place. It was taught by one of my students actually. He is not coming. <laughs> I will not say. Fine. Percentage. Fine. Uh, ORA percentage VIS. So ORA percentage VIS percentage is the one. Say so go there. And then query for this one. Fine. There are three profiles of that. Fine. ORA percentage VIS percentage. This is mainly for manufacturing actually. The work areas. Fine. Go there. But the work area, what happens? You make it as no. no. Fine. Initially, you make it as no. I don't know. Second one also, you make it as no. And third also, you don't make it as Probably from uh, uh, 25A onwards, the next year onwards, what happens? Uh, you may not, you will not be having this option at all. You have to forcibly do everything only by a redwood initiative actually. Fine for the manufacturing. So if somebody knows it or if you have any document, I will now learn and teach also because I don't know this. Fine, I have to learn this. So this is the one on the Vora Vis. Fine. Mainly for the manufacturing, the redwood initiative is coming very soon. Like the self service procurement, fine. The responsive RSSP, fine. This is also coming up very soon. So many changes, we had to live with the changes. Now, what happens? The, the shop area, fine. Whether if you click on this uh, 204143, if you click on it, my link, what happens? It got approved, right? Depending approval, it will not go into approved states. So it is now approved. All the three lines are approved, right? Fine. If you cannot approve separately line by line, actually, fine. The whole uh, PR has to be approved in one go. Now we go there, click on it. I will not go to the area. I will, go there. I will not go to the process requisition area. Fine, click on it. I will not go to the top. And then go to the process requisition area. So for the inventory destination also, we can order for asset item, expense item, and service item. Here also what happens? For the expense also, we can order all three. So we will not put the requisition number. Fine, we will not take the requisition number. So it's what? 204143. 204143. And then remove the buyer. Buyer is not normally mentioned on the purchase requisition. And go that more. And then I will not put the BU and then make a query. It will not be available on the process requisition area. We will not convert the PR into PO. So all the three lines are coming fine. I will not select all the three lines. I select it with a control. I will not select all the three lines. And then add to document builder. Fine. With a control, I am selecting all the three lines. Fine. Click on the add to document builder. Where which order will be coming on the right hand side. Fine. So what happens? The requisition line, you cannot add the line to the document builder. The item is not purchasable basically in the item validation org. So what happens? The item validation org has to point to the master. Somebody has made a mistake now. Fine, item validation org. So again, item validation org organization, what happens? They will not go there. I will not right click on the duplicate. We have to, what happens? Make this as what? A yeah, validation org. Like what happens? If you have a passport, you have a paper visa for US. <laughs> but if you don't have a passport, we cannot travel out of India at all. So the item validation org is nothing but a validation org. So it has to point to the master. It is fully explained on my purchasing training. Let me change it to the master. Because people are experimenting on it. 
will not go to the server. So I will not go to the what? Configure procurement business function. So till now, we have configured, seen what configure requisitioning business function, configure procurement business function. This is a big, big topic actually. So many things has to be taught in a systematic manner. And go to the Here, what happens? It has to be mastered. Drop it down. I will not choose what? Use one business unit. And there's one business unit. And then click on OK now. <laughs> so the validation org must be master. Fine. It is not a global master. It must be a master. So it's operations. I will not put operations over here. Then what happens? It validates you. So that is why what happens in this place, if I try to add to document builder, it is not saying it is not available on the global master. As of now, it is not global master. None of the items are available. First line, line three is basically an, what happens, a service item. So it IBO, it is not, it must be available on the IBO also. Items must be available. Then only what happens, we can make a purchase order. Right? So we will not change it to IBO. IBO will not change the operation. I click on second close. So this is all. For every concept we taught fully in a purchasing training, the change is the same. Now, what am I the and add document? This time, what am I the not give any error at all? Add a document. Order. Now, no error is coming. So, it is now getting added to the document. Order. So, here, what happens? I will not specify the supplier actually. So, if you have a source document of a CPA or a BPA, we can put it. So, that will all be fully taught in that. What happens? The PRPO automation and purchasing training. I will not say ABC consulting. I will not choose the ABC consulting. I will not click on that. We will be having a real uh, what happens? The supplier actually. This case, what happens? The Ames Hospital will be created. Uh, another, let us say, I am now having one supplier. Let us say, 3M supplier is there. Some supplier is there in Bombay. So that supplier name will be coming. Very great. But for now, for training purposes, what happens? We are now putting one ready madely available supplier. And then we are now converting everything into a P1. It is not confirmed. The right side, fine. Go there. With these informations, what happens? I am going to click on create. I will now be creating a purchase order. The purchase order is now getting created actually for the three setups. And then you can now see the delivered location, the master stocks location actually. The master stocks location is what headquarters. And so what happens there? You'll be finding on a, uh, what happens there? The not a master stock degree. And you will now see what happens. You know, it's not converted. So the Ames hospital location will be the delivered location. Actually. So the location will be Ames hospital location. Now tell me which is the org. The org will be 001 or 002. Anybody? The org on the purchase order will be 001 or 002. Come on, open up your mic. Only when you interact, what happens, you can understand it. The location is very clearly specified. Remember, PR and PO will not show the locations where exactly the item is required. Actually, So PR and PO are basically location specific. Org is also in the background. But what happens, it is not clearly, distinctly visible. You can now see the default shift location is what? This location. The purchase order here. Now tell me, it will also have the org. The org will be 001 or 002. Anybody? No, oh, nobody is answering. Are you hearing me first of all? <laughs> Build a location. Huh? Huh? Tell me. Can Neither you... of them. Neither of them is very correct. Then what is the correct answer? Now? It is not 001. It is not 002. Then what is the org number? The org will be picked up from this place. Now, thank you. Org, org will be picked up from what? Configure. Requisitioning business on the requisitioning business function. Yes. Picking up yeah. on this place. On this place, it will not pick up. So this is a default delivered organization for expense purchases and SSP purchases, basically. Thank you. Okay. So this is going to pick up from this place. This becomes the R. And then this becomes the location. <coughs> it is the location where the right. supplier has to supply. The org is coming from this place. And again, you want to keep it as a master or a dummy child. Whatever you want, you do it according. Got it now, fine? So depending upon the need, you have to put the default delivered order. So that will be coming on the PO. That will be coming on the PO. So the location is coming properly. In this place, what happens is down. If you go down, what happens is it normally doesn't show the org. We can even add the column. Fine? Go to the view. And then what happens is go to the column and then add the org column also. Or column, you can add it and then see. Because there is not, not much of a significance, fine, with the, like a husband only. Fine, not much of a significance on this, no, fine, but the lines are not coming. We don't want the schedules. <laughs> org is there. Org is also there. I will not go to the view and then go to the columns, no, fine, but I will not see whether the organization name is there or not. It's there. It's there. Is there, huh? Okay. Uh, uh, you can see there itself next to location. Oh, here itself it is there, fine. 
So in this place, what happens? Yeah, yeah. As you can see, the whole is already added. Actually, not much of a significance, basically. But this location is very big, significant. Both PR and PO are location specific, actually. Even though the location are all, here, there is no tie at all. The location is not tied to zero. Yeah. Zero. But that's the beauty. That's the beauty. It's not tied to the location. But for child dogs, it will all be tied, actually. Uh, that's why I was scratching my head. Uh, uh, <laughs> how can this now look? Right? So now I understood. It's pulling from the configure uh, purchasing request. Yeah, requisition. Got now, frankly. So this is a con clarity was not there for many of my students. Actually. I will not give a save, no, frankly, on save. And then I will not go for manage approval. We will not see whether it is getting approved or not. Now everybody is clear upon the expense destination purchases. Fine, click on the manager. There is no difference between inventory and expense. Fine, all the three are possible. Asset item purchase, expense item purchase, and then description based purchase. Everything is possible for both the destination types. Actually. <clears throat> but for expense, what happens? The location will not have a tie to org. And then whatever org you are giving, fine, an application developer only fine, click on submit by which what happens? The PO gets approved. 164938. Go that point. The PO number is what? US 164938. Now, the requester is going to receive it actually. The requester will be receiving it actually. So, receiving and requisitioning are client functionality. So, the requester is not going to receive it actually. <clears throat> so, it's not forbidden. No, no you're not submitting it for approval. No. Now tell me, the requester will now receive on the uh, requisition number or PO number. You must provide a valid receipt routing. Receipt routing is a mandatory one. And then it must be direct. Fine. Receipt routing is a mandatory one. Fine. It must be direct. So I have not done it. So it's not going for approval actually. It must be direct only because we cannot perform a standard and inspection receipt routing because it is now received at an external location. Fine. Give a cancel. No fine. We have to give a receipt routing. Thank you. Go to the place, fine, go there. So I will not go to the schedules, fine, go there. I will not select the first line and then click on edit. Fine. Only direct receipt routing is acceptable for an expense destination purchase. Because the, the what's called, your uh, this thing, fine, your uh, auditor or the salesman is now receiving it. So he cannot do inspection standard, fine. Only direct receipt routing is applicable. Fine. Only direct is available. Fine. Click on it. First line is direct. Go there. And then I will not go for the second line. The second line, fine. click on it, no click on it. The, here also what happens, it must be direct. For both SSP purchases and then destination purchases, whatever the hell go there. Fine, click on it now. <laughs> both of them, it must be direct only. It will not work for standard and uh, no. go to the receipt routing. I will not make it be direct. <clears throat> so this one, whatever, I will not make it as what standard, no fine. I will not show you this item, will not be available during receipt actually. <laughs> I will not make it as direct. Fine, no. So I will not show you, I will not generate a mistake and then show it to you. Fine, no. I will not, third one, what happens, I will not make it as direct. This is a service-based one. Fine, go on, correct it, and then click on edit. The second one, what happens? It is a standard actually. Then click on standard. Go there. So standard is not possible for this one. So here, what happens on the service one? There is no such receipt routing at all. Like what happens? We are not actually going to receive it. Like what happens? I know ordered for one hour of a nine hour dance. You just watch and enjoy. Fine. There is no receipt at all, which is involved on this. So for a service item, what happens? We don't have any receipt routing at all. So, both that point. so there are so many things which will all be ordered to be all these things will be taught in a purchasing trade. Right. Now give us save now. Fine. So for the first first item we are given, second item we are not given the receipt routing man mid as a standard actually. Fine, click on submit. So here's one six four nine three eight. Now it is eligible for receipt. And then remember these things has to be received on a what's called on a self service receipts. <coughs> you are not done now. Hello? Go and then query it. Click on it and then go over there. You will now go to what? Manage orders and then query for the order. <laughs> Many people do not have this basic clarity actually. <clears throat> when they talk so many things, when, I, when they are uh, discussing with me, then I understand that was, oh God, the clarity is not there for the student. So two, three students in the past few days, what happens? They discussed about me, sir, you're getting stuck on this, no fine. What to do, item or say it's all dependent upon the need actually, fine. And then make a search and click on search. And then what happens? Buyer is okay. Fine, go there. Uh, because he is only the buyer. So it's pending approval. If you click on the hyperlink of it, it will not show whether it is approved or not. Action is not available. Fine, you have to wait for it. Now. It won't take some time for the approval to take place. Because what happens? It is basically automatic. And so what happens? It will be getting approved automatically. 
Now, what you have to do is what? You right click on the duplicate. We are going to perform a cell service review. So, along with the RSSP, responsive cell service procurement, what happens? The My Results is also getting changed from January 25. There's a new one. Fine. You have to learn it. Fine. Both this and this you have to learn now. Fine. But we have a separate icon for the old one, My Results. So, you go there and then query now. Fine. Click on the My Results. You go there, go to the My Results. And then it will be done by the requester actually. And so, what happens? You normally query on the requisition, but you have the option of querying on the purchase order also. If you go on, then what happens? You can do it multiple ways. But usually, what happens? It will be done on the requisition. Because the PR is the ultimate one. Because it is basically a service for the PR, actually. The PO is a service for the PR. And so, what happens? This is a demand, actually. You query on the demand and then receive it, actually. And 204143 is the one. The and then items are due, what happens? You can make it as what? Anytime. Make it as anytime. And then go there and then query. So, there are three lines are there. Click on search. So, click on search. And now see, the appropriate PO will be coming up for receiving it. So we are going to receive on this now. Why only one and three line is coming? Why two is not coming? Anybody? Standard receipt, right? That's yeah. That's the receipt enough. loading has been made as a standard actually. So if it is a standard, we cannot perform a self service receipt actually. We cannot perform a self service receipt. Fine. That is why it is not coming. So it must be direct only <clears throat> for a SSP receipt as well as the expense destination receipts. The receipt routing must be standard act, uh, direct act. So that way the line number two is not coming. This is not going to be received physically. Fine, go as a logical receipt actually. Fine, go foodway, foodway, we can get in foodway. What is it? We can get in what? Foodway. Okay. It's asking put away. There's no put away here. There is no put away at all because now the what I mean the sales manager sitting in Bombay's residency is receiving it now. Where is the question of put away? The put away will come only for inventory destinations, actually. Uh, if you're going to receive on any of the inventory, then only the put away will come into picture. That is why direct receipt routing will be delivering in his house, actually. The courier is now delivered in his house, <coughs> the visiting cards. Now his wife, okay, he okay. In the house, his wife is receiving the courier, actually. Okay. So he will now, he has raised the requisition, he will now perform a receipt now. Fine. The system will now perform the receipt. So the salesman who is sitting in Bombay. He has received the visiting card. He will now select the line and then perform the receipt. So it must be only direct, remember. There is no standard and inspection receipt routing applicable for SSP purchases as well as the expense destination purchases. So click on receipt, my I'm going to receive it. <coughs> Go there. So what happens? You now say show receipt only. If you click on the show receipt only, it will be showing it now. And then to perform a receipt, what happens? The receiving organization of this organization must be set actually. So in this place, what happens? You have this now, fine. Uh, I'll go there to it. Configure what happens, you have requisition. So, this org, whatever you have as a default delivered org, the receiving parameter must be set. If it is not set, it will not work at all. It will not set, what happens, it will not work at all. See, you must set the receiving options for the inventory org, which has been mentioned on the configure requisitioning business function. And even though we are not going to make a physical receipt, it's a logical receipt only. So, the receiving parameter of the operations org must be set. You may even have a child org also there, right? A dummy child org you may have. So that must be set. Then only what happens? I will not go there. I will not go there. Click on cancel now. I will not go to the manage receiving parameter. I will not say manage percentage fine. Receiving percentage fine. Parameter percentage. So I go to the manage receiving parameter. I will not set up the receiving parameter of the master org. We are, remember, we are not going to make any physical receipt at all. It's a self service receipt only. So 000, zero, zero fine, go there. I will not go there. All the mandatory fields only I am filling it up. And everything will be fully explained on a purchasing training. I will not go there. Click on it. I will not make it as a none. No. The receipt routing is going to be direct. And make it as a direct. Fine. When you are receiving in the master, what I will make it as a direct. And go there. Generation is what automatic. The type is what numeric. <clears throat> I will not say the next result number is going to be five thousand. And then the RMA, what I will say, make it as a standard. Fine. All the mandatory fields only I am filling it up. So now it is now fully set, and so we can perform a self service receipt now. Any doubts? So five thousand one fine. Give us seven tips. Uh, this is also one. Make it as a all the mandatory fields are setting it up. So it will all be fully explained in the dream. You don't go to the receiving. Now you go there. If you click on the show receipt quantity, it will not show how much is expected from the supplier. Right? You will not click on it. How much is expected? You don't show you. When click on submit, by which what happened? The receiving gets completed. When click on submit, the receiving gets completed. If the direct receipt product is a one step receipt actually. So you created a receipt of 5001. Now you feel that something is defective. So you can even return it back to the supplier. 
fine what happens there are multiple arrangements are there fine what happens there? the courier itself fine the blue dot itself will not come to your house and then collect it or some other method you do it fine that will be set by the company now what happens i don't say 0.25 i want to whatever the return it actually so click on search now fine i will not put the gr number and then make a search i will not click on the right hand side click on it i will not go to what manage receipts now 5000 receipts fine click on it manage receipts i will not put the receipt number as what 5001 and then go there make a search now fine click on search i am not going to begin Go there, select it. <clears throat> I'm not going to return at a point to five. Click on return. I'm not going to return at a some quantities. The only one is there, so that's why I'm not doing it. Otherwise, it will be a whole number, whatever it is. It will not check first. What is the reason for the difference? It will not say damaged. Damaged goods. And then RME number is what? Some number I'm going to put it. The query number here. So, so point to five is now returned back. Click on submit. It will be returned back. Now, the supplier is now repairing it and then sending it back to you. So, it will be available for receipt action. Right? The return transaction was created. So, click on done. <laughs> so, if you go to the main one and then search for it, you will now say for the first line, whatever is the 0.25 is eligible for a receipt as well as whatever is the 0.25. So, whatever is now showing you full quantity, I don't know. Oh, God. <clears throat> so, click on search. Click on search. And then 241. Anytime, right? click on search. No. It has to show me a lesser quantity fine click on search. It's not getting recorded properly. If I try to receive it now, fine click on receive. <laughs> I will say how much is expected. It has to show me only point two. <clears throat> and you are going to receive. We can even make an excess receipt for which whatever the billing has been done fine. Again, again with the appropriate approvals with the appropriate authority. Now housekeeping, I'm going to receive it now. Fine click on it. I'm not receiving the housekeeping. So I'm going to receive it. It's only what happens. The entire amount comes as a quantity actually. Right. It is 1,500. Right. It is at a $1 price. What happens? It will be coming as a quantity only. Now tell me, fine. I have now ordered for a ninth hour dance, one hour dance. I am not fully satisfied yet. Fine. I want to return back 10 minutes of a ninth hour dance. Is it possible? One hour of ninth hour dance, you already enjoyed. You viewed and enjoyed it. Can I return back <coughs> 10 minutes of the ninth hour dance? Anybody? No. No, why? Because you already enjoy service. it. Service. Service. <laughs> Your service cannot be returned at all. It is not enough. It is not coming. Fine. We will not try to, what happens? Go there. Click on it. Uh, now go to the manage results. No, fine. Click on manage results. And click on search. No, fine. 5002 is the service. So 5001, what happens? It is a 0.75 now. I can return it. If you go to the third line, fine. The return is not possible at all. We can even perform a correction also. Corrections and returns are possible only for what? Asset and expense item are not for service item. You can go there, click on it. I will not click on return. I will not go to the return. Fine. You cannot return a fixed price services. So both corrections and returns are not possible on a service item. So corrections and returns, you know, correcting it. Correcting quantity is okay, fine. It's not allowing you. Fine. But a return is not possible. So for the previous one, Nana. That's for huh? the previous one. Oh, oh, in the sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so keep your cursor on the 1500. I will not see whether it is correct. Correction is also not allowed. No, fine. Click on that. And it's allowing you now. 1400. So corrections is possible. It seems fine. Click on something. Correction is possible. So the correction, but return is not possible. Yeah. So actually, we can... suppose, suppose you are taking the internet service of the airplane. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That is the package of uh, fifteen hundred you have taken. Yeah. But yeah. but you can you can uh, reduce or increase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correction is what whatever you have received, you have corrected it. I by mistake, what happens? Uh, uh, I have now made as a thousand five hundred, but it actually has now supplied only thousand four hundred. Otherwise, it is basically thousand four hundred one. So thousand four hundred rupees worth of uh, material is supplied services actually. So you can correct it, it is not allowing you. But return it is not allowing you on a service item. So this completes expense purchases. Fine. Are you all clear upon this now? Do you like this short video on this now? Anybody can say something to me? Yes, yes no, no. Very helpful. Very useful. Very Thank useful. you so much for taking your time. <laughs> Arun, you, yeah, is it clear? Huh? Yeah. One thing, uh, Nana, mm. we, we, at the time of uh, sales order import, yeah. Uh, you are writing a query and uh, getting data, right? Yeah. Actually, actually, if you go to the geography, uh -huh. uh, manage geography, mm -hmm. and what for that country, mm -hmm. whatever the address has been given. Yeah, you can even query on those things also. 
and you can put that because every yeah. time you cannot go for the there are, there are fine tuning of your query actually fine yes. you can do in the training we won't go into depth, that, that depth actually yes. you know teach you only the basics right. hima bindu have you understood it karnam are you yes, clear sir. purchases fine you are clear enough fine karnam are you clear on the uh, expense purchases yes sir yes sir any other queries please oh. Sripati Bhatt is an expert actually, so we don't need to have a Pratik, are you clear on this now? Yes, no, no, it was very informative and very good. I just enjoyed it. <laughs> Any other queries? Akshay Kumar? <clears throat> or yes, no, no, I've understood. Yeah, actually, it's cleared some of my doubts. Actually. So, need based, what happens? You'll not create a master org as an inventory or item or. And you can even have a dummy org as your default delivered to org on the config requisitioning bundle. Again, design in the field now, right? Whatever way. Again, discuss the financials and then do it design. <clears throat> so bye for now, and then we'll now meet on some other sessions. Actually. I hope Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, very informative. Thank I'm you so much. Are you, you uploading the recording? Yeah, yeah. This record I'll be uploading it to YouTube actually. Okay. In YouTube? YouTube. Not in our PDH? No, no, no. It is a YouTube one. Oh my God, many students, some three students got stuck in the past few days now, fine. So it will be uploaded only on the, uh, so not in the PDF study. It will be a YouTube training. YouTube video I will be putting it. You watch it and then you can download very well. You can okay, download. Thank you. Thanks, thank sir. You. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Fine. Bye. It is not anything. It's the PDF section. <laughs> That's why I'm not putting it in the training. Bye for now. And then we'll now meet on some other thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Once again, bye. 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 bye.